Hey friends, welcome to the Swing My Heart podcast with your host, Nicole and Hannah. Come join us for some hopeful conversations about heartfelt entertainment that makes your heart swing. Hey Postables, we are back with another episode and today we have a very special interview for you with the lovely and talented Kristen Booth. Welcome to the podcast, Kristen. Thank you, Nicole. Hi, everyone. So to start off, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get your start in acting and what inspired you to become an actor? Uh, well, uh, my name is Kristen Booth. I am from Canada, um, Kitchener, Ontario, to be specific. And when I was younger, I uh, was a part of a children's choir called the St. Mary's Children's Choir. And a bunch of the girls uh, in the choir were going to audition for some summer stock theater uh, in Grand Bend, Ontario. And so I auditioned for the chorus uh, and was cast in Annie uh, as uh, an orphan. And I was also cast in Carousel, but that one ran into the school year so my parents wouldn't let me do that one so (laughs) I just spent the summer doing Annie and and I was a member of the chorus and I was 12 and it's kind of where I got the bug and realized that that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life Um, (laughs) and then I pursued uh, theater school after high school uh, at Ryerson Theater School and uh, after that I, uh, I started doing some children's theater and from there into film and television and a little bit of theater here and there, but mostly film and television. And, uh, and I am uh, one of the stars of Sign Sealed Delivered on Hallmark. I play Shane McInerney. That's awesome. That's a great story. I'm a big fan of Annie as well. So (laughs) yeah, same. it's a a good one. Yeah. Yes, definitely. I actually auditioned for that in seventh grade I think seventh or eighth grade I know it was one year in middle school but I didn't get the part <laughs> well that's okay I, didn't get I don't any part but that's all I right. don't get a lot of parts trust me <laughs> as it's a professional right. actor you probably audition for you know you get one out of like 20 or 30 roles that you audition for yeah so there's a lot of re- a lot of rejection yeah right, right. Yeah. it was all right they still put on a good show so good Good, good. <laughs> I'm happy good for attitude. my friends that did get part. <laughs> so what was your first big role? Was it in TV, theater, or film? Uh, my first big role, um, I mean, I played Shelby in, Ma- in Steel Magnolias um, early on in my career on stage. Uh, I played Olivia in Twelfth Night on stage and then I did a movie it's for television with Farrah Fawcett called Jewel I played one of her daughters so that was a pretty big role at the time because it was with Farrah and it was um I can't remember which network it was for but it was for a pretty big network but I would say probably um you know playing opposite Ryan Reynolds in Foolproof which was a feature film here in Canada and then as far as across the border for in the U.S. would, would be playing Ethel Kennedy in the in the Kennedy miniseries because oh. that was with Katie Holmes and Greg Kinnear, Barry Pepper, yeah, big, some big big players. So yeah, that was that would probably be the notable ones <laughs> to oh start gosh. with. Anyway, I love it. Yeah, that's amazing. I actually have not seen either one of those, but I need to check it out. Definitely. Yeah. They're, they're both great in their own right. Especially foolproof. I'm a big Ryan Reynolds fan. He's great. Oh, well, the, if you love Ryan Reynolds, you'll love foolproof. Yeah. It's fun. A lot of fun. It's a, it's a fun heist film. Yeah. Yeah. Many postables like myself love your film at home by myself with you, or as most of us like to call it the traveling DVD where you portrayed a character named Romy Scott. Could you share with our listeners a little bit about the making of the film and what were some of your favorite scenes to shoot? Um, Well, At Home By Myself with You is one of my favorite projects. Um, You know, it's one of those ones that I 
barely made any money. Um, and as far as, you know, like accolades or, uh, you know, like media um, uh, attention, it was kind of like always under the radar. I did receive a Canadian comedy award uh, for it, which was pretty exciting. Um, but uh, that film's truly one of my favorites of my career, that role, that experience. It was filmed entirely with pocket change. So it was one of those first crowdfunding uh, films ever, like before they really, before crowdfunding ever really became popular, before GoFundMe, before um, Indiegogo. Uh, which are the two most popular in, in um, our industry anyway. Um, so basically I met the writer director, Chris Booth, which his full name is actually Kristen Booth, which is insane. Um, and I actually, interestingly enough, I mentioned that I went to Ryerson Theater School. The day I arrived for my first day at Ryerson Theater School, a gentleman, a, a guy in the second year ahead of me. So I was coming into first, he was in second. Um, he approached me and uh, he was like, hey, your, your name's Kristen Booth. And I said, yeah. And he, his name was Ryan Booth. He goes, my brother's name is Kristen Booth. And so I met his brother years and years prior with no idea that one day I would meet him and work with him so closely and become really, really, truly great friends to this day. So so Chris worked in a casting facility called Casting Central and he would help actors um, put themselves on tape. And he just started this crowdfunding um, idea with his wife. And so he had this little jar on his desk at, at the casting facility and actors would come in, casting directors would come in, directors, producers, and, and he would just be like, hey, you got any change in your pocket? People would throw money in. And then I think they also got some bigger donations, you know, like through, through, um, checks and 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 you know like wads of cash or what have you from people who could afford it but but the majority of it and the sort of premise was pocket change so it was a pocket change film is what they called it um and we shot it on a super 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 low budget I think the entire thing was thirty thousand dollars in and around there um and just to give you perspective I I'm re I raised money for my short film which I hope to shoot this summer um, and it's not, it's a short film. It's about 12 minutes long and my budget is $30,000. So that gives you an idea of how, um, much of a shoestring it was, <laughs> but we were all just sort of really small crew, small cast. We were all just sort of crammed into this little apartment, um, and then the hallway <laughs> of that building. Um, and it was one of the best experiences. It was, it was a really, truly magical one with the, everyone was there just because they believed in the project and they loved the script. And I loved the message about overcoming your fears. Um, and I just adored the character of Romy. And, and I loved working with Chris. It was his directorial debut. So, um, you know, there were a lot of firsts on that one. It was the first time I played the lead, like number one. Um, so the, it was, yeah, it was really, really a, a great experience. And then to have the postables give it new life by, you know, creating the traveling DVD. And I received, um, Mary Beth sent me a notebook with everyone's comments in it and where it had been. And it, it's just, it's been a, a really incredible experience from start it. to finish. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great movie and you did a phenomenal job and Kristen, oh, the director you. did a phenomenal job as well. And I can really relate in some ways to Romy because I have, yeah. I struggle with, you know, fears myself. So, yeah, well, you know, I think we all can relate to Romy on some level, especially after COVID. I remember, I remember thinking and seeing a lot of parallels to Romy um, when the pandemic hit. So it's a, it's a timely, it's, it's still like, you know, still very timely. I think it always will be, you know, I don't think it's one of those films that will lose that because we as humans are always coping and dealing with our fears right mm -hmm. yeah yeah so true yeah I unfortunately haven't had the opportunity to watch that one yet but it sounds really good and I think just hearing that story is really interesting especially since you guys share a name I think that's really yeah. interesting so that doesn't happen very often so I think that's a really cool story so thank you for sharing yeah, yeah, yeah. of course yeah yeah so do you have a favorite rule that 
like outside of the Hallmark Channel and Sign Solo Delivered that you've had the opportunity to play? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, there's just been, there's been so many roles. I think over the last, I think my career has spanned about 24, 25 years now. Oh my God, I'm old. Um, but uh, I think I've played over a hundred different characters in that time. Um, so certainly, um, you know, Ethel Kennedy's definitely one of them. Um, to be able to portray someone who is an actual, you know, uh, person living still uh, part of our history. Um, that was an incredible experience. Um, I, I think she's an amazing woman. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, you know, and so it's, you know, it's funny because each, each one, when I think of something pops into my head, I'm like, well, that was great because of X, Y, Z, or, you know, like Ethel was great because it was, a, it was a huge project, uh, fantastic character to portray, wonderful people to work with, um, uh, an historical docudrama. Um, but then, you know, like you go on the opposite sort of spectrum of it, something like at home by myself with you, which was tiny, tiny, but the role was so, uh, nuanced and layered and intricate and beautiful and sweet and funny and and I and that that experience you know we became this tight-knit family so there was that you know like each project is so unique in its own way um but uh I would say recently my role on the boys which um comes out in June season three of the boys uh has been a one of like a once in a lifetime or once in a career type of experience to be able to play a superhero on probably the most or one of the most top five most popular shows on television right now mm-hmm. so that's been pretty cool and their budget is massive so you know <laughs> I got to stand around and watch massive jeeps be blown to smithereens and guns the size of trucks go off and you know it was it was just like you know (laughs) things on the set were blowing up as so was my mind (laughs) wow that's That's awesome that's a crazy experience yeah for sure yeah Yeah. that's really great awesome I'm looking forward to seeing that well and just to warn again I've put it out there before but just to warn the postables it is, uh, it is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> it is very gory um, and very adult content. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Warning issued. <laughs> what was your most challenging character or scene that you had to play? Who? Um... Probably my most challenging character would pro- would be Ethel Kennedy. Um, just so much history to um, devour in a short period of time of preparation, an accent, um, pre- preparing to work with you know some big A list actors on a big production. Um, so I had to set aside all that nervousness and like anxiety and, and just like focus on, you know, doing my job. Um, and then, you know, like, it's hard when you play someone who's an actual person, because I didn't want it to be a caricature of her, you know, I wanted it to be rooted in truth and, and feel like she you know, a real, a real woman, not some sort of cartoony type that's like mimicking. I didn't want to mimic. So it was a lot of work to figure out her inner workings, like what made her tick and then how that then translated onto screen to become an authentic interpretation of who she was sort of thing, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So that was a lot, that was a lot of work, um, a lot of preparation, a lot of pressure. So probably that role. Um, and then most difficult scene. Um, I, huh. Oh, I, you know what? I, yeah, I do know. 
I played a role years ago in a show called Regenesis in which my baby had a, <laughs> ironic, a um, deadly virus. Um, oh. And I, I, my character chose to kill her child, smother her child to protect her from being um, used as a um, scientific guinea pig. Um, and that was probably the most challenging scene I've ever shot in my career. It was, oh. that was a rough, that was a rough day. <laughs> I can imagine it does sound yeah. really rough. Yeah, I was, um, lucky. I'm glad. I'm really glad that I didn't have children at the time that I played yeah. that role. I don't know that I, I would have a really hard time. I had a hard time then. I don't know. I can't even imagine doing it now after having my own child. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, we actors get into some pretty <laughs> crazy situations. Yeah, I can imagine. So we know your first role in Hallmark was in the movie A Family Reunion, where you played a character named Savannah. Could you tell us a little bit about that and how you got that role? Oh my goodness, that was um, that was 2013. My daughter was uh, just over a year. So it was kind of one of my first rolls out of you know mother or new motherhood sort of thing um I had red hair um and uh I believe I just auditioned for it um and got the role but that is the role that that's where I met Joel Rice um actually that's not true that's not true sorry I back as I met Joel Rice who's the executive producer of um, Sign Seal Delivered. I met him actually years before on the Kennedys. He wasn't one of the producers on the Kennedys, but he works for the same company that produced the Kennedys Muse. So I met Joel briefly when I um, was promoting the Kennedys in Los Angeles. Um, and then I got the role. Now, probably Joel had something to do with it. He, he knew me from the Kennedys, so I'm sure he had something to do with it. And then um, it was actually shooting that film that Joel approached me. I'll never forget it. We were in the hallway of the hotel in North Bay was where we shot it, which is north, very far north from where I am in, uh, um, uh, in Toronto, still in Ontario in Canada, but very far north, like four hours, I think, north. We were in the hallway and we were walking back from, I don't know, lunch or shooting a scene or something or a rehearsal. No, it was a rehearsal. It was, um, sorry, no, it was the um, table read. We're walking back. He walked me back to my room and he said, hey, do you, would you ever move to Vancouver? And I just kind of looked at him like he had three heads and I was like, sure. <laughs> Why? <laughs> He's like, oh, I have a part that I think you would be really amazing for would you be interested in reading the script? And I said, sure, yeah, of course. So uh, lo and behold, it was uh, at the time called Dead Letters uh, and it was the role of Shane McInerney. Mm -hmm. And I read the script and fell immediately in love with it. Martha's writing was unlike anything I'd ever sort of read before. Um, and this character was so um, independent and strong and flawed and beautiful and, I just loved her, smart, uh, so, so smart. And uh, I was like, yes, I want this. And so they put me through the ringer. I think I auditioned on tape about four or five times. And then eventually they flew me to Los Angeles to meet uh, Martha. And I read from Martha. And then about mm, a week later, I got the part. They called, gave me a call. Wow. That's so, and I was, and I was the first one cast. They hadn't cast anyone else yet. Eric, Eric came after me. So really they were, I think they were, um, you know, searching. Yeah. That's amazing. We can't imagine anyone else as Shane. You do a phenomenal job. Oh, in your thank role. you. Yes. Thank you. Well, she's a very near and dear character to my heart. That's for sure. Yeah. Getting off track from Sign Still Delivered for just a second. Sure. Um, your movie Winter's Dream that starred Dean Kane and Christy Swanson. What inspired the storyline? And as an executive producer, did you get much opportunity to interact with the cast behind the scenes? 
uh, uh, what inspired the story? Um, see my, you know, my husband is definitely someone who follows sports. He was a football player, a varsity football player in university. I uh, played hockey. Like he was very, very much involved in sports. And I think he had been following, um, Lindsay Vaughn's career, I believe. Um, and he just thought there was some really interesting things about her life and her career. And so he had said, you know, why don't we try to write a story loosely based on Lindsay Vaughn? And uh, that's where we started, um, pitched the idea to Hallmark. And then of course, you know, um, network gets involved and it, you know, there's a whole development process. And so, you know, things sort of changed um, from the initial sort of idea, but but that's how it sort of started. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I actually was a very hands-on executive producer. I was on set almost every day or every day um, behind the monitor, running around like a crazy person, problem solving. Um, it was a great experience for me. I was able to see how things work behind the scenes. Um, like, you know, really, really, um, acutely so to, I guess is a good word um I was right in the thick of it uh and it's stressful I I uh, producing is a very st stressful job um so you know I feel like moving forward there probably won't be a ton of producing credits for me but uh but I did really enjoy that experience and seeing things um seeing the machine work from from that perspective for sure you did a great job and it's a beautiful movie. I've seen it a few Aww. times. Oh, thank you, Nicole. Cool. And the setting is just beautiful. As that, well. yeah. Yeah. Manning Park. We shot it in um, Manning Park, BC. And my God, that place was gorgeous. That was the best part of the entire experience truly was the days off. Like we would get, I think we got one day off a week and I would just go and get snowshoes from the, um, tuck shop there at the place at Manning Park Resort and I would just go off into the woods right and it was just so beautiful and one day I had this little whiskey jack follow me for like miles this little bird just followed me with like you know flutter away and then come back and land like right beside me and look at me and then kind of go ahead and then come back and like it was crazy I was like what's happening <laughs> this little bird and I had a connection mm -hmm. but yeah awesome. no it's a great experience. And I got to share it with my husband and my daughter. So that was, that was amazing. I have great photos of Finley hand feeding the whiskey jacks. Oh, that's, that's so really sweet. sweet. That. Yeah. And Finley was in the movie. So, you know, oh. it, was a, it was a family affair. Yeah. She's, she plays this little kid in the ski lesson. Christy says, uh, who likes pizza? And Finley goes, me. Oh, I'll have to look out for her <laughs> next time I watch it. Yeah, that, yeah, that's great. I love that. Yeah, but that wasn't her her screen debut. She was in episode four of Sign yes. Sealed Delivered. Yeah. Yes. That's right. That's that was right. awesome. Yeah. So speaking of Sign Sealed Delivered, back to that topic. Um, mm -hmm. It is such a unique series, unlike anything we found on Hallmark. So what was your first impression when you first read the script for the first time? And what did you think of the idea behind the DLO? Um, my first impression was that the script was, um, very unique, um, to the network and that, um, it was a three dimensional story with three dimensional characters that were flawed, mm -hmm. that, um, needed each other in a way that, um, really created this family, um, out of these four misfits. Um, and the heart of it, I think, was what really sort of um, drew me in to it. I mean, there, there's just so much um, love in those stories that Martha tells. Um, so I think that's probably the most sort of unique aspect of it like it's not and it's not fluffy you know it's real it's it, right. it yeah sign seal delivered digs deep into our psyches and into 
the societal um, issues that we deal with, uh, um, you know, the trauma of going to war, mm -hmm. um, being separated by a hurricane, mm -hmm. you know, these aren't things that regular mm -hmm. Hallmark shows um, tackle. So to, to, you know, the pilot episode was um, a woman, you know, who thought she was going to lose her life to some rare lymphoma. So, mm -hmm. um, that's what really struck me and what intrigued me was was the complexity of the scripts not just their stories but the characters within the stories right yeah 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 the, martha is a brilliant writer yes. just the way she's able to tie all those themes together just blows my mind it's like so amazing yeah 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 and i think you know one of the re it's it's not one of the reason I mean I think it really is the reason why people postables fans are able to watch the episodes or the movies over and over and over and over again mm -hmm. and still after multiple multiple viewings find new things new themes new moments new new nuances that mm -hmm. you know you may have missed the first 20 times yeah. <laughs> right. and that's I think the sign of, of of a genius writer which Martha is yes definitely 100 percent yeah I still remember when I first watched it only took me I think about three days to finish the entire series of canon oh wow author. wow yeah oh, I was you didn't get very first you second. didn't get much sleep there did you Nicole <laughs> No, I think I pulled maybe one all nighter. Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> I was like, next episode, next episode. <laughs> no, it's very binge worthy for sure. It definitely is. And I actually didn't even like, I've been watching Hallmark for years, but at the time when I first found SSD, I didn't have cable. So like I had never heard of it. And I think we just somehow we, we got the DVD by chance. And so like we tried it. And at this time, I didn't know there was a pilot movie. So I started watching um what is this i'm like this is so good like i yeah. had no idea yeah so like it just like as soon as you watch it it pulls you and it's like okay i need to get the pilot movie and i need to get the other movies because this is just fantastic yeah. yeah 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 like hannah said i've always watched hallmark but i can't believe i never actually watched the show until just last year and one of my cousins told me about it and i was like okay i have to watch this show now <laughs> Well, I think, you know, that's one of the wonderful things about the show, too, is that, you know, it, it is this sort of, it started off slowly, I guess, but you could say on the network um, in popularity and, you know, the show, with the exception of um, the vows that we've made, I mean, it's been years since there's been new content and the fan base and the viewership just keeps growing and growing mm -hmm. and growing. And I mean, I think that's a huge testament to, to what we've done as, as, you know, collectively done as a group and Martha's done. And um, yeah, I think, uh, I think there's a reason why the fan base continues to grow with, without mm -hmm. new episodes um, coming on air. Definitely. We're keeping our fingers crossed for more. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I don't. I ha I have to say I don't have any news. Unfortunately, we haven't heard anything about uh, another segment or another movie. We're staying positive. <clears throat> staying optimistic. <laughs> good. Good. Well, as you should. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so when you first got, you know, the character of Shane, how did you build her character? Was there anything that you added or pulled from the script? Um. Well, yeah, I mean, of course, the scripts, uh, Martha's writing is, is so that I, you know, it's, it was kind of all on the page, mm -hmm. as far as like the information that I needed to know. And then, and then again, like, you know, you, I have to figure out what makes this woman tick, right? And um, because I approach each my preparation for each character is um, my goal is to find sort of the truth within the character. So mm -hmm. what can I connect to within myself? And then whether it's even just like a little kernel of something, then I can magnify that and create 
this character from a true place. Whereas I feel like when um, you try to manufacture or, or uh, put things on that are sort of superficial, it doesn't, it doesn't create a, um, a believable person. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, a lot of what I do is I look at the backstory. I look at the psychology of the character, you know, look at what Shane with Shane, of course, I look what back and see what she had been through and what shaped her. And obviously her relationship with her father, Mm -hmm. um, really, really had influenced her life, her decisions, her inability to be vulnerable, uh, to believe in something greater. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, all of that, I had to find those elements kind of within me. Uh, and as I say, like, even if there was just a tiny bit, then I just take that little bit and I blow it up and make it as big as I need to for whomever I'm portraying. So for Shane, you know, I really needed to find um, those feelings within myself of uh, fear of abandonment, um, fear of the unknown, um, faith, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. I have to say Shane's journey of faith throughout the canon has been one of my favorite things to watch. It's been incredible. Yes. You're, you're not alone. I hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. It's really inspiring, especially to me. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because, um, you know, it's funny. There's all these little tiny little miracles and little things that you're like, what? how did what um with this show and and I I have to admit like I I am not someone who is you know a faith-based person and you know I, I you know I've never been part of a, a church or an organized religion um and I think I've said this before when I was first offered the role and met Martha I was very intimidated by her faith and it freaked me out um I was like, is this woman going to try to convert me and like, you know, <laughs> spew her faith on me until I accept it kind of thing, you know, because mm -hmm. that had been my experience growing up. I, I lived in a Catholic community and I was mm -hmm. not Catholic. So there was a lot of like, you know, um, trying to share and um, I guess, you know, um, convert, not convert necessarily, but like you know, bring, bring me into that community. Um, and then I also went to a Mennonite high school and I was not Mennonite. So mm -hmm. I felt also there was, you know, I never really, religion always felt or, or faith always felt just didn't sit with me. Um, so uh, my journey uh, and my faith has, has developed and, and strengthened through playing Shane and knowing Martha for sure. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I would say my perspective and, um, my feelings towards faith are, are completely, uh, transformed as a result of playing Shane and, and, uh, knowing Martha. Right. Yes. And I'm still not, I still don't go to church, but yeah. <laughs> nature is my church, but, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I have a different perspective for sure. After playing Shane for so many hours of TV over several years, you've had the opportunity to influence Shane's development intimately. What aspects of Shane are distinctly hers and remarkably different from you? Well, her technical ability, because <laughs> I certainly don't have that. Um, I, uh, hmm. You know, that's a tough question for me to answer because I feel. I feel as though over the years, Shane and I really have kind of, I don't know, like melded into this weird like combo. Um, like, I don't think it's possible for Shane not to be in, the character of Shane not to be influenced by Kristen and vice versa. And in some ways I feel like throughout the years, you know, we started, where's the camera? We started like, you know, like this and we've come more and more and more and more and more like this and you know I feel like there's um there's been this sort of like uh 
melding of the two women. Um, I'm cert we're certainly still different, but but yeah, we're like, I don't know, like it's weird when I think about what's other than her crazy technical abilities, like I don't really, I mean, I, I still would say she's probably become more of a woman of faith in a traditional sense. Uh, since being with Oliver and and being influenced by him more so than than myself, um, but um, yeah, I mean we've really like in some ways sort of become like this sort of <laughs> enigma thing going on. I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> it's weird. Completely all right. <laughs> it's what happens when you play someone for so long. It's yeah. hard to. See. To the lines sort of blur and you're like right right yeah so what has been your most emotional or challenging scene that you've had to film on ssd that you would say i'm sure there's a lot of them but uh, yeah. out. definitely the letters scene in the bank vault in episode nine yeah um yeah. that was that one was a, a very highly emotional charged scene when Shane is searching for the next letter and mm. wondering uh, if she, you know, if she's, this is going to be her last breath. These, these will be her last breaths and, and um, what happened to um, the woman that she's reading about. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that sequence, that scene was challenging for sure. I can remember shooting that and I had so much emotion built up and anticipation built up that first take. I think I skipped like a massive chunk of dialogue. <laughs> um, but that's why TV is so great because you can do it again right. uh, and they can take okay. pieces from that first take and then yeah. get the part you missed and edit it together. And, you know, the brilliance of, of uh, technology and and uh, the um, nature of film and television, um, yeah, that that scene was really tough. Um, I you know the scene um, the I will never leave you scene in um, uh, the vows we have made that you know that was also a, a good challenge just emotionally speaking, but it was also, I, I spoke about this before, we had a lot of um, outside interference that day on set. And that's the thing, you know, people don't get to see. Mm -hmm. um, obviously when you watch a finished product, finished show is like all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Like if I recall correctly, like we had so much outside noise. It was so hard to concentrate and get the lines out without being interrupted by like construction outside. Um, I believe one of our cast members fell and hit her head and had to go to the hospital that day. We weren't making like our day, like we weren't gonna get our all the pages we had to shoot that day. So we were gonna be behind. Like, you know, there's just all these other things that are swirling around um, that you kind of have to block out in order to do the work and get what's, what needs to be um, there to make it good television. Um, so that was one of those, that was one of those days, right? Where everything was sort of going wrong. And then on top of that, it was a challenging emotional scene. So that was, that was a tough one. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know like, so much stuff happened behind the scenes, but yeah. I mean, that makes sense to I me. Mean, you never know in these movies what's going on behind the Oh scenes. yeah, like yeah. you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. Could go on and on, right. and on. I won't, but I could. Right, I mean, I'm sure sometimes like, you know, that environment can help you in a scene too, I'm sure, because you're already in that, you know, heightened state, whatever it is, whatever is going on. So, I mean, it definitely, you would have never known that scene was just mm -hmm. brilliant. You yes. and Eric did a phenomenal job on that scene. The no, best thank scene you. Scene, I would say, definitely. Yeah, Aww. I agree with Hannah. It was probably the best scene in the canon. Oh, yeah. thank you. Well, yeah. see, you just never know, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you never know.
I was actually just watching the movie last night and I was bawling my eyes out watching that scene. <laughs> Every time, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what have been some of your favorite scenes to film with Eric as Shane and Oliver throughout the course of the series? Definitely this dance scene in episode four, the masterpiece. Um, I love, I, I mean, I'm not a dancer, but I really wish I was. Uh, so I loved um, all the training we did for that and the, um, cease the filming of it. And, I, you know, I just, I would have loved to have done more of that. It was a lot of work, but I just, I don't know. There's just something I, I love. I wish I was a better dancer, <laughs> but um, I loved that. I absolutely loved that experience. Um, so that's definitely in my top three. Um, I mean, again, like another dance scene, this dance scene in the Christmas movie, I love too, because we're having this argument Well doing the dance which was a lot of fun and, and a great challenge for me as an actor to be able to it was kind of like you know tapping your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time and you're like doing these dance moves that are foreign to you and then also trying to remember what your lines are <laughs> so I I loved I loved that as well um and then I I really truly love the scenes with Shane and Oliver when they are at odds with one another those are the ones that I really get the most uh fun and charge out of um I I love when they bicker I love when it's you know they're at each other's throats and they disagree and so you know it's funny because uh in the vows we have made there's so much lovey-dovey stuff right mm -hmm. and then the, that one scene where you know Shane says it's fine it's fine um, I was just like, yes, <laughs> I couldn't wait for that scene because there is something so great about Oliver and Shane's chemistry when like they just are, they are so well matched mm -hmm. in their intellect and their fire and their stubbornness um, that they really can have a, a great, like a great argument. <laughs> <laughs> Those scenes are always fun to watch. For yeah. Sure. I can tell that you guys yeah. have fun. They're, they're fun to shoot. Yeah. I love those. I bet. <laughs> and we always need the tension or at least some tension. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely. So now that Shane and Oliver are married, if you have the opportunity to make any more movies, do you have any hopes for them as a couple moving forward? More arguments? <laughs> <laughs> you got to have those, you know. <laughs> um uh I I mean I I I think it would be really fun to see them have a child mm -hmm. um but you know Shane is no spring chicken so I don't know that I don't know that they would be able to uh and you know that whole aspect or that theme was a sort of like touched on with Norman and Rita so I don't know that Martha would you know if she had the opportunity to do another would be like oh I'm gonna you know get Shane and Oliver on that kid band bandwagon I think seeing them travel together would be hilarious mm -hmm. uh you know they talked about their honeymoon and the you know ballooning over Stockholm and he wants to go to the the male museum <laughs> um so I could see them uh butting heads quite a bit while while traveling the world which would be pretty fun i i have said from i don't know before the last one came out that i i truly think that the next step would be that you know international postables i think um that it would be such a great way to keep the series alive mm -hmm. um and have them travel outside of of the dlo and outside of the us and and uh sort of deal with certain more more international themes and um people i think that would be really cool right that would I be think awesome. so too yeah that is actually my next question if given the opportunity to solve the mystery of an international dead letter oh weird <laughs> where would you want them to go paris 
hello of course we gotta go co- we gotta go to paris i oh, mean yeah. like if we're gonna go anywhere it has to be paris um as far as what the letter would be and the story i have no idea but i just feel like paris is such a huge part of um the show and and their relationship and so yeah paris for sure yeah that would be a really interesting yeah. that'd be really interesting i could definitely yeah that. and Kristen really wants to go to paris too so i, mean, yeah, <laughs> I would love to sign me up yeah. Right, right. Yes, definitely. So we know that there's a lot of scenes that get edited, you know, obviously. Mm-hmm. And so do you, are you ever surprised by scenes? Like once you see like the final product that like how it was edited together, like if they cut stuff out, like what are your thoughts on that? Like when you watch those scenes? Yeah. I mean, all the time, all the time. I, you know, I'm, I find it so interesting to see what makes it into the film and what ends up on the cutting room floor. Mm-hmm. Um, And as an actor, you know, I've had to, over the years, get used to, you know, you know, they talk about um, killing your darlings in writing, right? Like Mm -hmm. sometimes when you have to do rewrites and such, you have to let go of some of your favorite things that you've written. And it's the same as an actor, you know, like not everything you do is going to make it to the screen and people are going to see it. So um, yeah, like you have to realize that some of your favorite moments or some of the moments that you felt uh, as an actor were like some of your best, so to speak, in that show, in that episode, just may never make it to the screen, like full scenes, right? Full scenes don't make it. In this last one, I think there were quite a few scenes that didn't make it uh, into the film. Um, I think I remember there was one in particular, I think with not with me, but with um, Mrs. McInerney and um, Papa Joe. I think there was an entire scene in the church that was eliminated. Oh, wow. Uh, and, and it's not, and, and that's the thing too, like you can't take it personally because it, it has nothing to do with performance. It, performances are all there. Everything's beautiful. And just as all the other scenes that, act, that make it in, but it comes down to time and it comes down to keeping it, tight and on time and Mm -hmm. you have to choose what's the most important um you know things that you want to be sharing and and showing and uh the other stuff you know sometimes has to go right so it can be heartbreaking at times for sure yeah definitely yeah festivals love your friendship with crystal on and off the screen what have been some of your favorite scenes to shoot as shane and rita Oh God. Uh, I, I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure the postables are actually kind of sick of how much Crystal and I love each other. Oh, no, <laughs> not at I, all. I, I, <laughs> honestly, like I miss her so much right now. I haven't seen her since we shot the movie, um, back in August. Um, so I just like, I just miss her. Um, I don't, you know, it, it is truly the greatest gift that Sign Sealed Delivered gave me is my relationship with Crystal. Um, I, f- I find it really amazing that someone who, um, you know, she's not related to me. We're not related. We're, you know, we're, two, we come from two, you know, different places. And by chance, we got on this show together, or maybe not, maybe it was meant to be, but I mean, she is my person. She's like a sister to me. Um, there are very few people in this world that you can sit down and share everything with. Um, and she's like, there's just no guys with her. Like we just share it all. And, uh, she's seen me at my worst and she's seen me at my best and she still loves me and vice versa. And, um, I just love that woman. Um, and I really like we, we, I really hope like she, she and I both have aspirations to work behind the camera as well. And I, 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 I can't wait for the day where she gets to direct me or vice versa. Probably it'll happen that she'll direct me before I direct her. Um, she's more of on a fast track with that. Um, but anyway, that's not answering your question. Your question was scenes that I love shooting with her. 
um, all of them. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I, I love, there's one I loved so much and I don't know why, like it just was so silly and small and maybe people wouldn't even remember it, but I remember it so well because we were just killing ourselves laughing. Um, it's a scene where I, I'm kind of hiding behind the pillar in the middle of the DLO and I'm trying to get her to, to, to like make a distraction or like, you know, so that I can get out of the DLO to read um, Holly's letter. I remember and so that. so I'm like, I'm like, Shane's like going like, do something about the ribbon cutting. And I'm like miming and yeah, that, I mean, we, we, you don't see it all obviously uh, in the episode, but my God, like we went, I went crazy with that. Like we were, I was doing all sorts of things and like, uh, it just got so silly that I think even our director at the time, Kevin was like, guys, like you need to rein it in. <laughs> it's like, but we're having so much fun. Um, so that was certainly one of my favorites. I love, I love when we get to be goofy, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, uh, Shane and Rita together don't often get to be goofy. Um, but that one was fun. Um, what else? Um, oh, I loved this and I also hated it, but, um, the scene where we sit, what's the movie? Oh, uh, to the altar, the scene where we sit and talk to, um, I think her name, character name was Jessica and Rita has the speech oh, yeah. about losing her mom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was such a wonderful scene to shoot in some ways because, I was able to just like sit and watch Crystal do this beautiful performance. Yeah. Um, and it was a good challenge for me as an actor because all I wanted to do as Kristen was just sob my face off. Um, but obviously I couldn't do that um, as Shane because I would, it would pull focus and be a little bit, you know, not, it wouldn't be right. So they're, they were there on business and professional. And so, um, you know, a little emotion was fine, but really, truly, I just wanted to like burst into tears and be like, oh, this is so good, Crystal. And yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, I love that. I love being able to watch her work and do that. Um, but at the same time, too, it was, it was kind of tough because so sad. Mm -hmm. um, and you got to like hold all that emotion in. So, and then, you know, that's got to come out sometime later on. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, and then, and then uh, when she was getting some of the scenes uh, on that um, in the um, road, less traveled, um, we had a lot, we had fun on that one. We, we got to be a bit goofy and um, share, share some secrets with about the men and that kind of stuff. And that was fun. That was awesome. Loved all of this. But really everything. Like I just love being in yeah. her presence, truly. <laughs> <laughs> No, I love that. That's great. That's one thing yeah. about Hallmark that I've noticed that a lot of the actors really love their co-stars and they're like really great friends behind the scenes, which mm -hmm. makes me so happy. I think that's yeah. awesome because, you know, that's very rare these days. So I think that's great. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this might be a tough question, but is there a particular SSD movie or episode that's your favorite? And do you have a reason why it's your favorite? Hmm. Hmm. I love the treasure box mm -hmm. I think it's a very unique piece of television mm -hmm. having two people trapped in a vault reading letters back and forth to each other is such a unique concept and I think written by any lesser of a writer wouldn't work yeah um but with Martha it was so beautiful so that's definitely one of my favorites I I have a very soft spot to from Paris with love mm -hmm. um I think there were so many great moments between Oliver Shane and Holly mm -hmm. uh so as an actor it was really fun for me to play those emotions and that tension um, but I also loved that story. Um, uh, there's something so beautiful about Shane quitting in the DLO and then mm -hmm. him showing up on her porch. Mm -hmm. uh, 
that's it with that swing um right. yeah that I think and then and then I always you know I always love the last one so um the vows that we have made is mm -hmm. one of my faves too because it's the last one and because it was awesome <laughs> <laughs> Right. There's so many good ones. It's so hard to pick. They're all amazing in their own right. Yeah. 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 Like I guess, like I said, like my favorite scene to shoot was from the masterpiece, but I didn't say that's one of my favorites. I like, so there's all right. there's such great yeah. things about all of them. And, um, but yeah, just, just try to narrow it down. I would say those ones. Yeah. I also, to the altar is also another one that, um, really, really stay like, sits really in a in a very fond place and a very um for me because of the subject matter dealing with mental illness um I you know I've experienced depression in my own life my own struggles with mental health my family has a history of mental illness um so that one was that one was also really that one hit home and and is also very close to my heart mm -hmm. yeah that one is a beautiful movie. That's probably in my top three favorites. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Janet Kidder did such an incredible job yes. in that role. I really like. Mm -hmm. I just you know sometimes I'll even like reminisce on that and be like, wow, that was she was mm -hmm. really amazing in that part. That scene in the lobby of the hotel where Shane and Rita are sitting with her and she tells she expresses her fear of, of the rejection of her daughter oh my god I always cry so every time. so good I so know. good Ugh. a lot of principals are enjoying your new Instagram page energetically aging what was the inspiration behind it oh um you know uh I am 47 I'll be 48 at the end of the summer um and uh you know admitted uh, admittedly um uh experiencing perimenopause uh and um that's kind of like the impetus for it was like I was really feeling alone I and like confused and and like uh there isn't a lot of um talk about when women go through this whole like hormonal shift and a different stage of their lives and also, too, at the same time, you know, there's this whole idea of like women reaching their peak or their prime, and then it's all downhill from here, from here. And I, I that just didn't sit right with me. Uh, and it kind of made me angry. Um, so I felt alone and I felt frustrated and I felt angry. And I thought, you know, if I feel this way, there's got to be more people feeling this way. And so one, I wanted to create a community, a place where people could go and talk about these things unabashedly. Um, and I figured if I led by example that people would follow. So I'm hoping that continues. I've seen some great like shares and, and people sort of revealing what they're experiencing. And, um, and then also like, this whole idea, like I said, of aging and that, you know, re women reach a, a point and then, and then that's it. Like, you, you know, I disagree. Um, in fact, I think, I think that, uh, you know, I, despite the hot flashes and the, the, the hormonal shifts, I feel like I'm embarking on the best part of my life, really. Like, you know, um, I'm learning to accept myself more. I'm learning to, um, speak out more, um, be less afraid of what people think. Um, and I feel like those are only positives. Those are not negatives. And so, um, I want to encourage women to, you know, not fear aging. Um, and, and that doesn't mean like, I'm like, and you'll see, like, as, as time goes on and I, I have lots of plans for the page and the account. And I, you know, I want to talk about all sorts of aspects of aging, you know, um, the choices of whether to use, you know, plastic surgery, Botox and injectables that, or, or go the natural route or, or, you know, do things that are, you know, what do we do that feeds us? What do we do? And is it, and it's not just about your outer appearance as you age as well. So I feel like, 
I just wanted to create a place where people could come and um, feel like they belonged to a community of other women that were kind of in on the same page or in the same boat. I'm really enjoying it myself. I, I've really loved all the posts. Oh, good. Thank you. You're yeah. Welcome. I mean, I, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm having fun and, and uh, doing it and it's also helping me. Yeah. So it's selfishly, like I, I feel like it's, it's energized me in my pursuit of uh, accepting and uh, embracing the aging process. Right. No, I think it's a wonderful idea like, yeah. great to use your platform and also to inspire mm-hmm. others and yourself as well. I think that's, that's amazing. Yeah. I love that. Thank you, Hannah. Thank yeah. you. It definitely inspired me as well. Good. Yay. Yeah. I love to hear that. Thanks. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So I was wondering if you could tell us also a little bit about your Etsy shop. I, I love the work that you've done on that. I was just wondering like, what made you like, you know, get into that and start making these paintings that are just so gorgeous. Like, Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been an interesting year. I, I, um, and all of it has sort of sprung out of my, my, um, entering the change, so to speak. Um, so the painting, uh, kind of came as a byproduct of insomnia. I, um, along with my perimenopausal symptoms came insomnia. And in January, I was really, really suffering. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd be, I'd be able to fall asleep, but then I wouldn't be able to stay asleep. So I'd be up at like two thirty-three and be wide awake and have no hope of falling back to sleep. And I, as much as I tried, um, I would just lie there and like stare at the ceiling going to try to will myself to sleep. And then I said, this is just pointless. I'm not, it's not working. So I got up and at, at the beginning of the pandemic, I had gone and spent some time out with my parents, um, Finley and I, and my husband, cause they lived on a farm and it was in the middle of nowhere and it was lots of room for Finley to run and animals to play with and all that kind of stuff. So we figured it would be a better place to sit out some of the pandemic, um, the lockdown. So my mom is an artist and uh, uh, an an art teacher now. And so she had art supplies and I just was like, hey, I'm gonna try my hand at watercolor. I had always Mm -hmm. loved painting when I was younger, but I'd never done watercolor. I'd always been an acrylic. artist so uh I st- I kind of just fell in love with that and then you know we we the lockdown ended and we kind of got back in the swing of things and um or the major lockdown anyway like the big one where the whole world was locked down um and then I you know I'm working and distracted and whatnot but that 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 those nights of insomnia kind of was like well what else am I going to do I don't want to sit and watch television and so I just started painting and, the, and then I saw this documentary um, called Fantastic Fungi uh, that kind of like blew my mind truly about um, the world of fungus and mushrooms and how incredible they are and the beauty of them, like both sort of like if you look at them and also like what they do and their power and, and that's, I just started painting mushrooms and like that's all how it started and then I posted I think I remember like maybe like my third painting one night and just said I had a you know here's my results from a sleepless night and I was flooded with requests to to buy the painting and I was like what (laughs) so crazy like I was like no you don't really want to buy this and you know people were like no no I want to buy your painting and so you know uh, then I you know, kept posting and people kept requesting. And I thought, God, I, maybe there's something here. So I opened the Etsy shop and, um, I, I, it's kind of insane. Like I put up, cause I'm not pro I'm not all that prolific cause I have other things going on. I can't just sit and paint all day. Um, but whenever I post, you know, five, six paintings, they're gone within five minutes. It's, yeah, yeah. it's kind of incredible. Um, so thank you to, yeah. to everyone out there who's helped support me in this. And I do absolutely love it. And um, I'm actually uh, in the process of having 
prints made uh, and cards made. And um, I would say in the next two weeks, I'm hoping hey. to get those goes Sorry. up. Those will get up on the, on the shop website. So um, yeah, I, I, yeah, just this crazy byproduct of um, my insomnia. <laughs> That's amazing though. Yeah. Honestly, like I love that. Like, yeah, like being creative. I've always been a very creative person myself, never really so much into like painting and art, that type of stuff. But I think it's amazing for the people who can do that. And the fact that like, this was a product of, you know, your insomnia and that you decided to, you know, pick up this talent that you have and start using it and to see, you know, many people have been inspired by it. I think that's amazing. I mean, I know I would love to get one of those paintings. I like, would, yeah. <laughs> always sold out, but I know. Um, yeah. Well, more, more are coming. And uh, but, as I yeah. said, I'm also having prints made, so there'll be more available and, and at a, you know, cheaper cost as well, which is great. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, like I, I have to say it's been a wonderful um gift in a way uh that's come out of something very you know st I struggled with and was very frustrated with it but something wonderful has come out of that and you know it also has been such a as you said such a creative outlet for me when I'm not on set and then when I'm not shooting and I think I have to admit like I think that's been missing in my life mm -hmm. um for those down times and we have them actors have them you know where you're not working and um you can get quite frustrated creatively speaking and this has been a beautiful way for me to um express my creative yeah. you know side and uh when I'm not on set so so again thank you to all who have supported and and for the continued support yeah definitely, definitely. I'm excited to see those prints that are coming out I'm excited too yeah that'd be great great yeah the cards are super cute they're like little mushroom red mushrooms with little animals and stuff oh. <laughs> the one that you posted I was like oh yeah. my goodness this is gorgeous I want it yeah. <laughs> so great I love this I and I love cards too so like that's perfect yeah. I love, that. love that you're doing that yeah yeah thank you yeah welcome. in just a few short months so many of the postables will be at Rama Drama I know I hope <laughs> What are you looking forward to most? And could you share a little bit about the charity auction for Shane's wedding dress with No Kid Hungry? Um, yeah, so I have every single thing that can be crossed, crossed that COVID doesn't delay our, our uh, Rama drama experience yet again. Because um, my God, it just has been cursed. Um, but I would say what I'm looking forward to most is just an opportunity to be able to connect with everyone that um, is coming that I, you know, that I've been able to converse with and communicate with via social media, um, you know, and see all the posts all the time. And, you know, it'd be just so nice to be able to put faces to names and, and, you know, human interaction is, is unlike mm -hmm. anything else like this, you know, this is great. I, you know, yeah. zoom and, and cyber connection is helped us tremendously, but there's really truly nothing like being in someone else's presence and feeling their energy. And so I'm very much looking forward to meeting everyone face to face. I, I think it's going to be a really, really fun, um, weekend. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I'm actually talking to the ladies um, uh, of Rama Drama about offering a class. So sort of like a workout meditation slash wow. kind of thing. Um, I'm hoping, we'll see. I'd love to be able to hold it on the beach, but I don't know if that's possible. But um, I'm trying to get that on the schedule so that people can join me for something like that. Because I think that would be a lot of fun um, mm -hmm. and a way, a great way to wake up when one of those mornings. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yes, uh, so Shane's wedding dress, um, such a gorgeous, uh, Jenny, you, uh, Jenny, you from New York design. Um, and you know, I, I, I have the choice at the end of it, each movie usually to choose what I would like to take home as far as Shane's wardrobe, which is 
one of the perks um, of the show. And I was, you know, it's like, well, I'm, you know, I'm not going to wear this wedding dress, um, but it's just too beautiful to just leave behind. And then that's what I got the idea to somehow auction it off for charity. And so I contacted the ladies at Rama Drama and we worked together to figure out the best way to do that. So yes, um, the auction will be on the Friday night, I believe the karaoke party and people who are there will be able to bid, but also people who are online, I think. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so I think it's a silent auction and, and I, whoever the highest bidder is will walk away with Shane's wedding dress and her veil and her shoes. It's <laughs> amazing. And I think, you know, I think um, one, you know, No Kid Hungry is such an important and uh, mm -hmm. incredible charity. And I'm so happy that we can support it. We've raised over $10,000 so far because of all of you and your generosity. Um, and those videos and all those perks from the, from, you know, your donations are coming. Don't worry. I know it's been a while, but we just, with all the delays with Rama drama, we've been trying to figure out the best way to do that. Um, but yes, yeah, so, uh, it's going to be quite exciting, I think. And, uh, you know, even if someone were to bid on it and win it and it wasn't their size, I mean, it's such a showpiece. You could have a mannequin in your living room with it, you know, it would just be gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> or you could make a tablecloth of it you know yeah <laughs> did you get the joke yes <laughs> Good. love it I'm so excited to, um, yeah it's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be a wonderful time wonderful yeah. event yeah. yeah before we get into our fun rapid fire questions other than the boys do you have any other exciting projects coming up to share with our listeners um well, uh, the feature film Marlene that I shot pre-pandemic is out in theaters here in Canada, and that'll be coming to streaming services and maybe a limited run in theaters in the U.S. in May, I believe, or the end of, no, sorry, June. It's June in, in the U.S. Um, so keep your eyes open for that. Uh, it's an, a really incredible true story. Um, and the boys in June, and then... Um, uh, season six of Working Moms is headed for Netflix in May. I'm looking forward to seeing that. I love your role on that show as well. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, You're welcome. she's 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 fun. You do a great job. Thank you. Do we want to get into our rapid fire questions? Yeah, yeah. sure. All right. Our so the first question is: If you had the chance to step into another character's shoes on SSD for the day, who would it be? Oh, that's a good question. Um, that's really hard. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Definitely not Oliver. <laughs> no, I would not want to have to say those speeches. Um, dare I say, um, Sh Sharon McInerney? Yeah, you could say that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think that's, yep. I think that's who yeah. I would like to play. That would be a fun role to play. Yes. She's a character. Yeah. Yeah. That's yes. so weird yeah. for me to play my mom. <laughs> We are so glad that she's on the last movie. She did a great job. Yeah, 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 yeah she did. It was so fun to meet Shane's mom. That was great. What kind of music do you enjoy listening to these days? Oh, um, I kind, I'm kind of all over the map, Oliver, all over the map. Um, uh, with music, like I like, uh. I like a lot of different music. I'll sometimes I'll listen to classical and opera, but then other times I'm listening to like Imagine Dragons and um, you know like heart like oh I'm really loving the um, the soundtrack for uh, Euphoria the show Euphoria right now the soundtrack is amazing uh, so I love that 
I love Adele. Um, mm-hmm. I love Casey Musgraves. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I kind of, I'm kind of all over the place. Um, I just, I just heard a great song by Banks. Uh, I love Billie Eilish. Like, yeah, lots of, lots of different stuff. Yeah. I love the Beatles. Me too. I mean, yeah. And then, and then, and then at the same time, like one of my f- favorite artists is Gordon Lightfoot, who is a Canadian folk singer, uh, a songwriter. So, you know, like just there, I have very different an eclectic group tastes in, in, in music just because it really depends on my mood. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. I feel that. That makes sense. My dad loves Gordon Lightfoot. I think that's one oh, of his favorite artists. The best. He's the best. My dad in, plays the guitar and sings and he used to sing and play the guitar when I was a kid growing up well, and still does. And so he would play so much Gordon Lightfoot and yeah. it just brings me back to those moments of you know, sitting by the fire at my dad's feet, listening to yeah. him play the guitar. So it's it's very special music for me. Oh, that's great. I love that. Yeah. Our music interests are all over the place too. I think I mentioned this to you back in December on Cameo, but um, yeah, my first concert was Dan Fogelberg when I was one year old. Yes. Yes. You did mention that. <laughs> you know, I think having a, a wide, you know, birth of of um taste when it comes to music is is great yeah mm-hmm. open to lots of things I just don't like really twangy country that's the only thing oh, I don't like I don't like that either yeah um, but I you know I, I'm obsessed yeah. with Taylor Swift and um yeah yes she's great so if you could travel anywhere in the world where would it be <sighs> um hmm. God, I want to, I want to go to Greece. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to go to Paris. Mm -hmm. I want to go to Africa. Mm -hmm. Um, um, I want to go to Iceland. Yeah. As well. Uh, Yeah. I mean, kind of like, honestly, kind of anywhere really I I mean though I'm not I have to admit I'm not a huge traveler I never really have been but I I uh I definitely there are certain places that I Mm -hmm. I want to um see before I die and those are definitely few yeah yeah oh yeah Greece would be awesome Iceland Mm -hmm. would be amazing Mm -hmm. I know how you choose it's like it's so hard like I'm a huge traveler but it's so hard to like choose like just one destination because they're all just just so much you know you could see everywhere yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. no totally get that yeah favorite rainy day activity Mm. uh probably binge watching a tv show or watching old movies yeah Mm -hmm. It's a good one. Our last one is if you were going to a desert island and you could take something with you besides the essentials, such as a phone or food, what would it be? My dog. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hold on. Oh, so cute. <laughs> I mean, how could I not take this little guy? So cute. So cute. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's all sleepy. He had to go in the kennel because he was barking right before we started. And so I put Aww. him in his kennel. So he's all sleepy. Oh. Yeah. He's <laughs> such a good boy. Yeah, definitely. He looks like a good, he looks like a good boy. I mean, I didn't hear him bark or anything, so. No, he was, once we started, he was really good. That's good. Yeah. (laughs) For all the new postables, where can they find you on social media? Uh, Well, Kristen T. Booth, at Kristen T. Booth, and Kristen is K-R-I-S-T-I-N. 
Um, and then uh, we chatted about my uh, new account for uh, energetically aging, and that is energetically underscore aging. Thank you so much, Kristen. This was so much fun. Ah, uh, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank what you. a pleasure. Fun. Yeah. Yes. I'm looking forward to seeing you in person at Rama Drama. Yes, me too. Yeah. <laughs> me too. All right, Postables, I think that wraps up our interview with Kristen Booth. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed, and we will see you soon for our recap of To the Altar. We love y'all. Bye. Bye, Postables. Bye. Bye.